Welcome back to Movies at 2 a.m., the show where we discuss B movies, bad movies, low budget movies, box office bombs, critical disappointments, and all manner of obscure film. I'm Bryce Huffman. I'm Irving Thomas. And today, we're going to be discussing the 1993 superhero comedy, The Meteor Man. We're also joined by our good friend Parker. Let's word, go. Word. Yes. Yes, he's here for the vibes. For the vibes, for the vibes. The vibes. Yes. And a couple of notes. Might need those too. Before we get into the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, uh, as we should have been doing from the start of season one, spoiler warning if you haven't seen Meteor Man, but it's also like a... Wow, we've never thought to do spoiler warning. But that is the show. You know what's crazy? I've done a spoiler warning before uh, for Sleepaway Camp, but then I didn't spoil the movie in that episode. (laughs) <laughs> i was just like yo this ending is crazy <laughs> that's ass backwards oh, yes man. yes so even if you've not seen this 30 year old movie spoiler warning uh irving tell me why did you you put meteor man on the actual schedule what what made you put it on there i put meteor man on the schedule because i realized i've never seen the full thing um <laughs> we said we were doing a season about black movies films and i don't know i feel like this definitely falls under the radar for a lot of folks but it's also a classic like yeah anyone that grew up in the 90s in especially in detroit is like you say meteor man robert townsend for what he did who also i think is very underrated very yeah very Uh, very talented guy very Um, talented writes directs produces acts i love the five heart beats (laughs) yeah. <laughs> classic. I love that movie. Definitely classic. a classic. But I thought, yeah, I just thought this would be be a good one to cover. Uh, we also, within that, watched Blank Man, which yes. we will talk in the next episode. Yes. But, yeah, it's just like black superheroes, let's do it. Yeah, and the superhero genre is like the most profitable genre on the planet right now. Like, these are billion-dollar films right now, but back in the back in the early 90s, I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't quite like that. I mean, you had the Tim Burton Batman movies. The uh, so you not taking Meteor Man over Wakanda Forever. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Coogler's gonna see this and be like, "I'm never working with these imbeciles." <laughs> and you know what? I couldn't even blame him. I'd be like, "That's real, dog." <laughs> <laughs> so you have standards. I I appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, man, this is a this is a classic. Uh, I had seen this movie a lot as a kid, and then hadn't seen it again probably since college. Cause yeah, it came out in nineteen ninety three. Yeah, so I, I saw it a ton as a kid on TV. Um, like you, I don't remember had I ever seen it in its entirety in one sitting. I definitely have not. Yeah, but I I definitely once I like rewatched, I was like, oh, I've seen the whole thing. I just I don't think I've ever seen it all together at once. I, I will go on the record and say I have not seen it all. And that's okay. Yeah, that's, that's okay. fine, yeah. That is okay. Um, when we... We're going to have... I, th- I thought it would be fun to have you on this episode specifically because you might not remember it because <laughs> we took very extensive notes for this episode and this movie is ballistic balls. Balls on the wall, like, it don't make no sense. Yeah. He, yeah, blow, so- he <laughs> blows crack at villains. <laughs> Bill- yeah, nah, yeah, he does. No, nah, I didn't... <laughs> Bill Cosby is in it. Yeah, Bill Cosby kind of sort of saves the day. And he has superpowers and talks to dogs. He talked to dogs? Hey, yeah. Man, this movie is different. Yeah, this movie. So let, let's <laughs> let's jump into the IMDb synopsis. <laughs> your face, your face says for, it all. Yeah, for everyone who hasn't seen it, this is the IMDb synopsis. A high school teacher from a troubled inner city Washington, D.C. neighborhood becomes a superpowered hero and takes on the gang that has been terrorizing his streets. Pretty succinct. Uh, I don't think that comes close to explaining just how many powers this nigga has. He has every power. You said it best, and I I, I don't even want to steal your shine. I want you to say it again. But you called him Mister Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, I called him. I called him. Uh, <laughs> what did, I said he was like a a, a simple version of Doctor Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> Mister Manhattan, that works. That's him without the doctorate. <laughs> oh my God. No, he's I'm, a substitute teacher. He definitely doesn't have a doctorate. <laughs> no, he definitely doesn't have a doctorate. And I mean, he's getting by. He'd be showing up late to work, like. Mm. You know. He he gets blamed for kids getting beat up because he tells them run away from bullies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. His yeah. anti-bullying campaign was actually super impressive. I, y'all keep going. Y'all just <laughs> so as we've been doing since uh, I think towards the end of season one, me and Irving go toe to toe with our synopsis battle 
Irving, you care to go first? I can go first. All right. I'm going to drop the mic afterwards. JG, don't be mad. Uh, <laughs> okay. And I didn't even write this down. I'm going to freestyle this. So this, is gonna be, this is really going to be fun. Okay. <laughs> Black Super Batman Man. Yeah, that's right. You heard it. Black Super Batman Man. Actually, that's Blank Man. Yeah, that, that's definitely that's definitely Blank Man. And it wouldn't be black. It would be broke. <laughs> so so let keep me, that in mind for the next episode. Yes, keep that in mind for the next episode. That's a, that's a sneak peek. Um, Robert Townsend. I would say he's kind of, he's, he's stronger than Superman. Like, he's like... If Direct TV had a superhero and like a um, and like a like a character, he'd be like Direct TV man, the black version. So Tubi man, Tubi man, Tubi man, Tubi man. Um, he has the power to stream ad free. Yeah, that's a thing. Um, he can fly. So Tubi man, we we go on a journey of. By day, substitute teacher. By mid afternoon, Tubi man <laughs> goes and flies through the streets of where they Washington, Washington DC. Washington DC, the capital. The capital. Gang violence, police brutality. He takes it on. He takes on all of it and defeats the street lords. Actually, they're called the Golden Lords. Yes, the Golden, the golden lords. lords. Yes. In a battle that comes down to the final blow and the help of Bill Cosby. That's mine. <laughs> That's mine. Yeah, I always forget that Bill Cosby's in this movie until I wish, I'm watching it. I wish I forget. I I wish I didn't know Bill Cosby. I wish Bill Cosby was not in this movie. Yeah, it would it would take it would make my enjoyment of it just like a lot higher. We're gonna get shadow banned. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna visit Philly and like the goons are gonna come out. Like it's gonna be like Meek Mill popping a wheelie, <laughs> and then Bill Cosby is gonna be holding his back like behind him. Like, <laughs> put you on no fly zone. It's like yeah. I heard that episode about Meteor Man. Hold up, you gotta. Heard that episode that you young <laughs> oh man did God. about the meteor man? <laughs> oh my God! He's gonna tell us to pull up our pants. <laughs> <laughs> pull up your pants, or I'm gonna throw a Jello pudding pop at you. Wow! <laughs> Respect your parents. <laughs> Kids say the darnest things. I say the creepiest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's All right, let, no, let's dial it back. So let's here's, it back. here's oh, my here. synopsis. In pre gentrification, Washington D.C. Oh, that's good. A nerdy substitute teacher in one of the roughest neighborhoods is suddenly hit by a meteor. I didn't even bring up the meteor, damn. (laughs) You didn't. I played myself. You won. You won this one. He then gets an unlimited and unspecified amount of superpowers. I like the unspecified. But will super strength, flight, super speed, um, see-through vision, super fast reading ability... Super Electrification powers. <laughs> He's well, EV. All... <laughs> He's EV. The ability to talk to animals. <laughs> Doctor well, Doolittle. Doolittle. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. He talks to he dogs. He has literally every power you could ever think of. Will all of that stop gangs? His fear of heights and nosy ass neighbors who can't keep their mouths shut about his secret identity. I wish I hadn't freestyled my. The answer is barely. Ooh. Meteor Man. <laughs> <laughs> J- JG, can we get some applause for that, man? Thank you. Thank you. It took me 18 minutes exactly to write that. <laughs> well, I didn't time myself. Ex- I started writing it and just happened to notice what time it was. Okay. And then by the time I like edited it and like had it finished, I was like, oh, that was 18 minutes that just went by. I played myself because for these next two episodes we're doing, I just took a bunch of notes and <laughs> didn't actually fill out the proper like structure of the episode. So. <laughs> that's, that's fine. So, so tell me, man, who, who all is in this movie? Who, who isn't? Uh, Don Cheeto, Bill Cosby, <laughs> yeah. uh, Robert Townsend, um, Cypress Hill, Luther Vandross. Uh, Luther Vandross. Big Daddy Kane. Big Daddy Kane. Um, you said Eddie Griffin? 
Eddie Griffin is his sidekick. Marla Gibbs. Uh, Roy Fagan plays, like, the head of the Golden Lords. Yep. Which is hilarious because he was in just a, in the Super Bowl but, ad. I didn't think about that. Yeah, I, I, I like. I didn't think of the five heartbeats connection either. Oh, I, that was like the first thing I noticed. Wow, but okay. I, I guess I had already known that for like years, so I don't know. I did, it it yeah. didn't really come to mind in the moment exactly. But shout out to the film nerds. Said the house yes. is a place for love. <laughs> how much did this movie make, and how much did it cost? Did how, you look that up? I did. I did. Um, Good because I didn't. <laughs> no, amazing. It did not do well in the box office. What it, was the budget? $20 million. Ooh. I, I want to start by saying, everyone that's watching this episode or listening to this episode, you need to watch this movie. The CGI is phenomenal. Like, it, phenomenal. It's so great. If you grew up watching the Power Rangers or, <laughs> or uh, um, Beetleborgs or... VR Troopers. VR Troopers, like the explosions and like the superpowers and the visual effects... Take this to a whole nother level. So it, Michael Bay before Michael Bay. N- more no, like, I would, I like imagine if Michael Bay wanted to do all of those explosions and effects and car chases and stuff, but he had the technology of, of Richard Night Donner Shyamalan when of, he made the first Superman movie. Mm. So like he has 1978 or whatever year that movie came out, uh, would, special effects. But he has this grandiose vision. That's that's what the CGI. I, I would looks throw like, in I M Night. It. I would throw in M Night Shyamalan as well. Because it's out there. <laughs> it's out there. It's like Robert Townsend. You you build differently. But it only made $8 million in the box office. Ooh. So it, it tanked. Yeah. That, I mean, and, the, and I'm sorry. I don't even mean to cut you off. You can't find this movie. <laughs> I was going to ask, is it on Tubi or Any, anything? No. We had to watch it on just some illegal website. Yeah. So this, to, this is the first everyone, time we've done that too. I think. Yeah, every other movie we've either found on streaming or just rented. I think Nowhere Michigan. No, not not Nowhere Michigan. Was the hardest movie to find thus far? Crossover first episode. Yeah, because we had to buy it on DVD. Mm. Yeah, the DVD for this on Amazon. Guess how much it cost? Sixteen ninety nine. At, you said sixteen ninety nine. Oh no, seventy dollars. Excuse it's me? a rare item, bro. It's like, rare. It's basically a collector's item. Yeah, yeah. Anyone listening or watching, if you buy us a copy of this movie, you're going to be my favorite person for at least a year. Because that's not going to get us that's not going to get us that copy. It expi- <laughs> your, your your title of favorite person expires and do they have to renew it? What do they have to do for you afterwards? Oh, well, I, I guess they would have to come watch movies with us. That's not that depends. A vibe check. That depends <laughs> on who it is. Any stranger could buy us, Meteor Man. So no, it did. It someone did not, stalking us is listening. All I have to do is buy the Meteor Man DVD. Yeah. <laughs> I hope not. I certainly hope not. But yeah, this movie did not do well in the box office. Um, I don't think it did well with critics either, according to uh, Rotten Tomatoes. I want to switch it up for you because today I would like to see what reviews you pick out. Oh, uh, I didn't actually select any yet, but I can. Okay, I would love that. So, uh, yeah, this movie, this movie, um, the tomato meter for critics is twenty five percent. For audiences, it's thirty six percent. So they're both tripping. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, I, I think critics. A, it, it's a movie that like it's about black superheroes. It's about a very like a black thing. It's like it's a neighborhood trying to fight. Gangs and crime and poverty, it right? Do. That sounds great. That now that no 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 this that sounds movie, great this for movie, niggas. <laughs> this <laughs> for white people in the Bill Clinton era, they were like, nah. Movie brought together Crips and Bloods. Yo, this <laughs> movie, this movie. Well, what else did this movie do? Actually, it I don't know. Together. Yeah, I mean, it inspired this episode. So yeah, <laughs> that counts for something. <laughs> so I'll read. I'll read. Uh, the review from Roger Ebert because he's just oh such a hater. God. Oh, he he's, reviewed this. Yeah, yeah, you and Eric weren't lying. This man has touched every film. Probably. Oh, this Good, man. This bad. man was the most notorious film hater ever. Like I, I think I don't mean that as a bad thing. That's my new life. Everyone goal. likes to hate on films from time to time, but this man was like a professional hater. That's my new goal. He was. It was Chicago Tribune. Uh. The, the so the rev, I don't know where the review was originally published. This one uh, is just on his website, but oh, I, okay. I, it was probably 
the Chicago Sun Times. Oh, okay. I would assume is where this one was published okay. back in the day. But all right, so Robert Townsend's The Meteor Man is a good-hearted fable about a mild-mannered school teacher who is struck by a glowing green meteor and transformed into a superhero. He uses his powers to rid his neighborhood of a street gang named the Golden Lords, who dye their hair yellow and recruit skill tri- uh, school children as junior auxiliary. I forgot about the child re- rebel soldiers. This movie is crazy. It it, talk, it talks about Greek culture. It's basically a fraternity. Uh, y- yeah, it's yeah. Like the street lords. The street lords. Not only do they roll deep as hell, but there are levels. Like, it, or it's like Scientology. You have the kids are the golden. Uh, like the pawns. No, they they're, they have names. They all have oh. names. It was what was it? It's golden juniors. Then it's uh. <laughs> then it's golden. Oh my god! But once you, it, it's like it's like it's like Pokemon. It's like or you, you level know, up. You you do level up. You do level up. And once you finally make it to Golden Lords, you're you're just. You're basically still a golden junior. You're just an adult. Yeah, I also seeing Don Cheadle with like that platinum blonde hair is amazing. Legend. I bet no one asked him about Meteor Man. Platinum blonde hair. Yes. Yeah, like I, I assume he either dyed it or just put on like a cap of some sort. But um, yeah, like it. Man, I'm really going to watch this now. No, yeah, thank yeah. you, and that's why we need you on. If we can convince you to watch it, we can convince listeners out, out, outside so these the, the, I, Listeners, I will say, I haven't been around both these motherfuckers for a very long time. <laughs> it's a lot easier to convince me because I'm used to this. Um, he, he's already been indoctrinated. Get, like, <laughs> <laughs> not, it's not you saying we groomed you. Put a cosmetic on we're gonna get canceled. This is uh, I'm, I'm getting banned from Philly, yo. Man. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, but man, the 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 Golden Lords. I will say this, man. They were organized as fuck. <laughs> the scene where they uh, so there's a scene in the movie where Eddie Griffin, who plays, uh, he's like uh, a scientist, bro. He plays doctor. like the best friend of the main character. What um, was his job? Was he a scientist? He was a science teacher. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, that. he was a science yeah. teacher. So his friend, Eddie Griffin, is diabolically horny all throughout this movie. Yep. And he steals Meteor as Man's our, costume as our most man. to pretend to be him to impress women. But the Golden Lords have been hunting down Meteor Man for most of the movie. So when fake Meteor Man is out in the mall, the Golden Lords like converge on him with members of each like tier, like the adults, the teens, the kids. They all like converge on him in the mall, and I'm like, to coordinate all of this, these motherfuckers are organized. No, it was is really impressive. So gangsters are supposed to be true organized, you know? Awesome yeah. organized crime. Yeah. yeah, bro. If the city of Detroit was as organized as the Golden Lords, okay. nigga, we would be living in a utopia. So you tell a me. utopia? <laughs> I said organizes them, not as as evil as them. We'd be living in a zootopia. <laughs> it would be animal. It would be like a, that it would be like, the, zoo. like the world that Killmonger wanted to create. Honestly, that's kind of scary. <laughs> they do have gold, like he did. <laughs> that's 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 really scary. Yeah. We're going in a really scary place. We also didn't touch on that James Earl Jones is in. This oh film. my god! Okay, and, and I I feel I feel like we're we really missed a moment to to. I, we should have led with that. He is in this movie. Like they, there's like a neighborhood watch that works with Meteor Man. They encourage him to be a superhero. One, his parents peer pressure him into being a superhero. Yeah, when he gets hit by the meteor, it's discovered that he has like these weird abilities, and his parents are the first ones to go, "Yo." It doesn't make any sense though because they didn't know his identity. But those doctors, he has to go to the hospital after he gets hit by the meteor. Yeah. And like these doctors are doing a bunch of tests. Like he's in like, isn't he in like a full body like bandages and wrap? Yeah, yeah. So when he gets hit by the meteor, it like gives him a bunch of burns, and he's really messed up. So he gets taken to the hospital, and he's in like these like a full body like bandage thing. And then when they take it off, he's perfectly fine. And they're like, he healed. He must have abilities or something. But his parents, then his parents find out later because his yeah. dad is like. Kind of like the head of the neighborhood watch. Yeah. And is the only one that's really like standing up to the Golden Lords. And they're like, oh, you trying to flex your muscles? All right, we're going to beat the shit out of you and your family. Um, yeah. So he protects his parents. And then they discover his powers. And they're like, oh, yeah, you're going to be a superhero. 
there's a whole montage of his mom like creating his costumes, which were awful. They were the fashion police. Joan Rivers is rolling over in her grave because I'm just like, <laughs> wow. Wait, Joan, Joan Rivers is dead. I right? was gonna ask you that. I don't. I know. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure she is. Let's so y'all say going to the next part. I'll hit Google. Okay. okay. <laughs> I think she's alive. She, I don't she, know. She's. De- I'm pretty sure. No, John was alive. Yeah, she's. No, she's dead. She oh, died she in 2014. Okay. Oh. Okay. okay. Perfect. Wow. Perfect. Perfect. Because I was like, well, I, not perfect. I, but I, I, like oh, when he said that she died, I was like, that sounds familiar. But let me let me just check. Okay, I was just making sure. Because uh, hey, because niggas for sure for like three straight years kept saying that Kel Mitchell died. So I remember that. I mean, I remember yeah. That. So for like five years straight, said Betty White died, and then. She actually, actually died, died yeah. R.I.P. Yeah, R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah. Um, and to Joan Rivers, even though we weren't entirely sure if you were gone or not. R.I.P. Or never mind. I, I don't know enough R. about Joan Rivers other than her being the fashion police. So maybe <laughs> R.I.P. <Possibly>. Maybe <laughs> I'm either pointing. I could be pointing up, but I could be pointing down. I don't know. But <laughs> let, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Don't mind me. I'm just tired. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, man, what were your favorite parts of this movie? You were already They're, talking about come on, man. James Earl Jones and his wigs, the come CGI. On. Um, Come on, man. I would say my favorite part is when Meteor Man learns how to fly. Um, I, don't, I hope you didn't mention this already. I don't think you did. He has a fear of heights. So he flies, like, low to the ground, like... Basically, like, the height of a car. Yeah, yeah, and it's like... (laughs) It makes no sense. It'd be like if we lived in a neighborhood where, like, Superman regularly came to save people, but he only flew, like, at shoulder height. (laughs) It's basically like in SpongeBob where uh, Barnacle Boy and Mermaid Man had the invisible boat. That's kind of, like... How high he'd be flying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, he flies, like, barely above the ground. So it's, like, six to eight feet, maybe. Yeah, like, eight feet tops. So it's really silly. Um, yeah, but it looks great it because looks, it's so silly. It looks amazing, and he's being chased by Don Cheadle is one of the Golden Lords. I can't remember his actual name in the film, but he is like the right-hand man to the main boss of the Golden uh, Lords. Yeah. And they're chasing him down the streets of D.C., shooting out of the— Shooting Uzis, <laughs> Spray, spraying at this man yeah. while he's flying like a mid-sized sedan um, <laughs> or mid-sized SUV, sorry. Um, that's a great... And a lot of the my favorite moments in this movie are just predicated off of the CGI is so bad but also so innovative that I'm just like, I really appreciate this. Like, the even the meteor itself, it looks like a growing a glowing crack rock. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think my favorite thing of like visually, this movie is so goofy, but it like this. I think it's, it works. Yeah, because this, unlike the movie we're going to talk about next week, this movie's like aimed kind of at all ages. Like kids could watch this and you know I appreciate it. Was it. A kid movie. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, like I think it it's, might be PG. Like it's it's very. It is not PG, bro. You're smoking crack. You might be smoking crack. No, like this movie might. BPG. I'm, I'm gonna look you, it up right now. You cannot put a crack house in a PG in a PG film. Parental guidance, you know. I, I mean, this was the '90s, bro. The '90s was a wild time. You are not guiding your child to crack. Oh, PG. What does that say right there? Say that's, swear. That's not swear. That's PG. I told you. <laughs> say swear. Oh, I swear. Uh, told you. Um, the tiny, '90s was tiny wild. listeners in this as well. Yeah, uh, and he has a tiger. Debo. Debo with the little, uh, little. Golden he has blonde a spray. <laughs> I literally just thought about him biting Meteor Man. Yeah, so there's a scene where he tries to beat up Meteor Man, and every time and he anyone hits him, that's he, like, seen Friday something. knows, like the character uh, Tiny List and RP that plays um, Debo. Debo from Friday is he's like this massive dude. human yeah. being. He's like Black Bane. Yeah, essentially, like he's a, he like is a massive. We might have human. some people that aren't Batman fans. He's a big ass nigga, bro. <laughs> like, like if you see him walking up on you and you were stopped at a red light, you would run the red light. Thousand percent. Give me yeah. a ticket, cause hey, that's a one way ticket to hell. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so there's there's a part the where Man is a brick. That's one of his powers as well. Oh my god. Oh my god. This movie is great, Parker. You need to watch this. I swear to God. Yeah. Wait, so. Did I watch it at? 
Oh, we'll we... have to send you the link. Yeah. Wait, actually, actually, when we post this is this is fucking hilarious. When we post this episode, we were also post a link to the illegal stream <laughs> so that you too can watch because no one is paying seventy dollars for this. I know that for a fact, and you can't find it on streaming. The illegal stream won't get y'all post like for the for the thing taken down, will it? Because I it hope not. We'll just edit it up. Right, yeah, fuck like, it. like right, I mean, man. I just want to make sure you know, just safeguard. Hey man, if we're gonna get shadow banned, appreciate you. If if we're gonna get shadow banned, it's for me hating on Bill Cosby. <laughs> I don't think hating on Bill Cosby is gonna get a shadow banned. I think like all. most people are willing to be like, yo, fuck Bill Cosby. They should be. Yeah, uh, you never for, know. Yeah, for the show notes of this episode, I might just put at the bottom, fuck Bill Cosby. Okay, because I'm not mad at that. I like yeah, that. because like, because he Bill was doing Cosby. some weird shit. He was doing some weird shit. Yeah, right. Past that, though, past that. When, when when you get a package in the mail and it's just. A uh, uh, half melted pudding pie. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> let let me just know. Please don't be mad at me when I distance myself because I don't want this. <laughs> Is that gonna be like our version of like the, candy the mafia man. putting the fish on, on your car? <laughs> That's as close as it gets. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Pudding pop. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's gonna roll up dressed as Fat Albert <laughs> and just go Jello pop. <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, so what are you, so what are some more of your favorite scenes in the in the, movie? Uh, the scene where they that that scene where they shoot him up, um, just in like the first time they recognize like oh he's bulletproof, yeah. But he like flails around. It looks like something out of Power Rangers. Like in it, it's amazing. It I looks love like something second. out of the Power Rangers. It looks like something from the Matrix. Um, yeah, the where, scene where he stops the bullets from hitting his so community. The members. Golden Lords are ruthless. They really are like gang violence. Like you would think like they're pro the gang GLP, violence. The GOP the was in the like the 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 writing room with Robert Townsend because like the view <laughs> of what gang violence looks like. I'm like, man, if this is what DC was like in ninety three, oh hey man. <laughs> thank God I wasn't there. <laughs> I wouldn't be here to do this episode. Um yeah. No, the 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 Golden Lords try and shoot the entire like neighborhood watch midday, and uh, Robert or Meteor Man <laughs> protects everyone. But it looks like the same special effects they used for Mister Anderson. Oh no, uh, Agent Mr. Smith, Agent, Agent Smith. Smith in the Matrix, and it's but imagine that, but like with like a quarter of the budget for like visual mm-hmm. effects. It's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very fascinating. I was gonna say it looked like uh, the one kid from Beetleborgs who was super fast. It looked like that visual effect. Yeah, I like that. Also, we should, we should make a movie like that. Quick side tangent: I love that the black kid on Beetleborgs was the super fast one. That's damn. Is that racist? That's it, racist. Yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> yeah, bro. Because like, okay, why can he not be fast? Like, is he, like is he fast just because he's black? <laughs> I, I, maybe yeah. he was the fastest beforehand. I don't know. We don't Before know. he got powers, we'll <laughs> he only never got know. Fast. I got power. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's move into our awards for the episode. Who did you have for best performance? R.P. John Witherspoon. He's in this film as well. Yes, I. Yeah. Um. You said who wins best best performance for you? That's really tough. It could be the Slinky. <laughs> the Golden Lords play with the Slinky like maniacally when when they're approaching. It's it's one of my favorite visual gags in the movie. Do you know why? Do you? I wrote the quote down, and it's one of my favorite quotes. Do you know why they move with Slinkies? You got to just say it. Slinkies move like life. In one second, everything can change. <laughs> is that like an actual movie note or something? Or something? Yeah, well, that's like a real thing. That's a quote. That's, that's what the movie. Golden Lord said to yeah. Meteor Man. Yeah. When they pulled up on him with the slinky and started beating his ass. <laughs> Do you know how fucking maniacal that is to walk up on a nigga with a fucking slinky and then tell him some profound shit like that and then beat his ass? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what? Pretty. This is 93? Yeah, 93 was wild, boy. It's, man. it's pretty insane, man. Uh, so you have the slinky? I have the slinky... <laughs> We're doing best performances, correct? Yep, yep. Um, also want to do another shout out to Jennifer Lewis, who is in this film as well. Yeah, she's there great. Are so many people in this in this movie. Um, James Earl Jones, shout out to you. I don't know. I really enjoyed all the scenes with him with his wig because it was just so crazy. That's why I, I got him as my best performance. You look at James Earl Jones and you're like, you're just like this all, almost larger than life figure. Like you're. You're the voice of Darth Vader, but you're also the voice of Mufasa. Mufasa, like that—that's insane. 
And I know like light and dark balance to the force. Literally. I ain't never that, thought that, that was, was a bar. That's that I wish crazy. I I wish I had not hit the mic when I said that bar. I, I, <laughs> I mean the no, bar is gonna live forever. That was your know. version of uh, New York do 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 <laughs> light and dark. <laughs> You're not in the forest. Um Yeah, yeah. Um uh, hey! Let's go. Um and then of course Don Cheadle. Um it, I mean it really goes it goes to Robert Townsend. Like, how did you keep a straight face? Biz Marquis is in this as well. He's in the crack yep, house. Yeah. That's my favorite scene, actually, from the film. Um, There's a lot of cameos in this movie. There are so many cameos. Uh, Meteor Man busts a, a crack house and blows all of the crack that they are packaging at the, I guess, criminals? Yeah, like the drug dealers. Drug dealers. Um, and then leaves. Um... But yeah, no, there are a lot of performances in here, I, I, but it's it's going to Robert Townsend for sure. Yeah, for me, it's James Earl Jones, just because, like, he's this really, for the most part, like, this kind of serious figure, really intimidating voice, but seeing him just, like, in every scene wearing these different wigs cracks me the fuck up. <laughs> Sinbad is in this movie. Well, yeah. actually, hold on. Hold on, because Sinbad's character is really funny, too. Yeah. He is. I have him as. I have him in my notes later. But oh, okay, okay. No, then I wait. I wait because I want to hear what you have to say about him. Best line. Now this this there's a lot of lines you could pick for this. Best line. Um, get off me, crack man, drug dealer, people, meteor man's in town. There are some weird lines in here. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of non sequiturs. Oh, in this movie. actually, my favorite, my favorite, seat belts. You gotta wear your seat belts. That was that was the one I had written. This is like what? A car crashes into uh, into him into Meteor Man once, and this is early on when he's discovering his powers, and he sees his handprints in the I think it's the hood of the car, mm-hmm. and he looks at the the person in the car like seat belts. You got to wear your seatbelts. It's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, that's for sure my favorite. How do I explain that to my car insurance? Like, my insurance. Like, yeah. Now, it's funny you mentioned that because now I'm thinking, like, the movie, the pitch for this movie must have been like an after school special to help inspire the youth of of inner cities across America. To stay out of gangs? Yeah. (laughs) And they're like, you too can fight gangs. As soon as you get hit by a meteor that gives you all of these powers. <laughs> Otherwise, okay. you better run. <laughs> so so the meteor has a weakness. Well, Meteor Man has a weakness and it's narcolepsy. Would you <laughs> would you given the same opportunity to get those powers get those powers if you became narcoleptic? Yeah, so the the powers that he has, every time he uses them, it makes his body physically super tired, right? It's like a side effect of the meteor. Mm-hmm. So there's a scene where he... Until he re- re-ups on more rock. Yeah, literally, he has to get more of the meteor rock in him before he can, like, be rejuvenated. But <laughs> Would you uh, buy something called meteor rock off somebody on the streets? On the streets? Fuck no. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? The motherfucker came up to me and was like, yo, I got this new weed strain. It's called Meteor Rock. Nah, bro. Like, yeah, like, if, if especially, like, if it's, like, just some person on the street, like, you hey, yo. You said on the streets. Yeah, 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 I got that. I got that Meteor Rock. That sounds like, mm, I, I ain't trying to smoke none of the rocks you selling. Nah, I'm good on that. That sounds interesting. I'm just saying. <laughs> so you would? Happy Black History Month. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm just saying. I don't know. Um, okay, fair, fair. Yeah, uh, what drinking game would you play? I think there's a really easy one that would get you really fucked up. For me, it's every time Meteor Man uses a new power. That's a really good one. Yeah, because you would be fucked up. (laughs) That's a really good one. I would say every time someone talks to a dog, that happens a decent amount of times in this film. Every time Eddie Griffin's character is criminally horny... (laughs) That's a pretty dicey yeah, you'd, game you'd as be, well. You'd be getting pretty drunk every time. There's just a cameo, honestly. But I, the yeah. movie wouldn't be. The movie is already hard to find. I just got to keep telling the people. <laughs> we're gonna put the link out there so you guys can actually see this. Because right now, I just feel like 
this is like a secret, like an inside joke that you guys aren't in on because it's so hard to find this movie. And no yeah. one's probably seen it in such a long time. And you're not paying $70 for the DVD. And if you do, you are more committed than I am. Let me borrow it. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to pay people to rent it. <laughs> You Make could, your money back. <laughs> I'm opening a blockbuster. <laughs> it's just got one movie, The Meteor Man. <laughs> oh my Did you God. have any other drinking games? Um, no, those those are really mine. Um, I think you know I touched on a lot of the notes that I had in here. Um, seeing and I'll, I'll revisit this thought. Seeing Luther Vandross as a villain was pretty interesting. There's like a in the film. They're the Golden Lords, and they're the main antagonist of Meteor Man, but there's also, like, a league of villains. Um, yeah. There's, like, a white man whose name I do not remember. Um, I don't remember if he... I'm pretty sure. Got it. I don't, he I has don't a name. remember. He has a name, because he called... Uh, when he put the hit out in the, Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, um, he has a name. Luther Vandross is one of these evil people. It's sort of like this whole, like, legion of, of evil. Um, he puts out a hit on Meteor Man... Because he is trying to prevent crime. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and he puts a bounty on him, a million dollars alive, two million dollars dead. So that's really the driving force for the Golden Lords trying to kill Meteor Man is they're just trying to get two million dollars, which I I think adds a, com- a new element that I really enjoy about the story. Yeah, because at first it was like they were mad at him because he's stopping them from being the gang in the neighborhood, right? Like he's trying to drive them out. Then it's like, oh, you get not only do you get to get the dude who's pissing you off, you get two million dollars if you get him. So, yeah, there's a lot of fun uh, in that final battle between um, what was that's the, actually my the favorite. That's, the, act, that's actually my favorite moment. Yeah, what was the leader of the Golden Lord's name? I don't know. You have a computer. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is true. <laughs> that's actually, but no, thank you for for jogging my memory because that's actually my favorite moment. So Simon, 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 yeah, Simon. There is a final battle between Simon and Meteor Man, and the magical the what did I call it? Green, the green crack rock, the green meteor meteor rock. What did that say? I don't know what you okay. said. Okay, doesn't matter. Um, he, Bill Cosby, again, of course, comes to save the day and brings, I guess, a shard or a piece of, like, the, the meteor that, that uh, hit. He has powers. When you touch the rock, you also get powers. So Simon picks up on that. Um, Him and Meteor Man both touch the rock. At the same time, Media, Meteor Man's powers are dwindling, so he basically needs to recharge and Simon's like, oh, I'm about to get powers. So they both get powers, and to Bryce's point, they can touch, like, a book and instantly know everything in the book and become a master of, like, if yeah. it's a technique or whatever. They touch a karate book and then have, like, a quick karate battle, which is amazing. But then he's looking for the karate book because after – it only you, – you only know what's in the book for 30 seconds. Yeah. So after that, you have to touch something else. The next book he he touches is a modeling book, and they have a Vogue off. Yo, it's it's like the greatest. It's insane. It's yeah. insane. It's brilliant. Like, I, if I met Robert Townsend, I would be like, yo, like, you're just. Like, it's a genius. You're flat out. You're a genius. This, yeah. How do you come up with something like this? So additional flowers to give. Uh, I have John Witherspoon for his cameo because that was amazing. I have Sinbad for his cameo. Well, I, I guess Sinbad well, is well, less break of a down cameo. The, well, break down their cameos. So John Witherspoon's is when he's on the TV show, uh, and he's and he's trying to convince people that he's Meteor Man because, you know, it's a secret identity. And he's just, like, talking as if he's he's done all this stuff, and it's just really funny. And, uh, yeah, R.I.P. John Witherspoon, man. R.I.P. Detroit legend. Yeah, and you can, you can break down uh, Sinbad's. Well, I'm trying to figure out who was he dating. Oh, um, was it his question. love interest? No, no. I think it was one of the other teachers, correct? I believe so. Yeah. So I believe, if I remember correctly, Sinbad, uh, like Bryce said, Meteor Man by day is a substitute teacher. So there's this whole other element of like him being at school and like trying to look after the kids, et cetera, et cetera, and. He, I think he has a love interest. I'm not sure. He wasn't really on his P's and Q's. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and didn't really use his powers to his uh, his full advantage because I would have been robbing banks. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just throwing <laughs> it out there. Oh, but you'd I'm, have been like, fuck the neighborhood. I'm getting rich. <laughs> thousand percent. I have resources to get back to the neighborhood. Bingo. But Okay, Nino Brown. <laughs> hey, hey. I can do it how you got to. Come on, man. Um, no, Sinbad is dating, like, I think a friend of uh, Meteor Man's, but it's a black woman, and he's supposed to be, like, this pro-black, like... Almost a hotep. Pretty much a hotep, but he whispers to Meteor Man, like, he pulls him aside, and it's like, this is my first time dating a black woman. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Like, my name, they call me, she calls me Malik, but my actual name is, um, I have to look it up. Oh, my God, I wrote it down. His actual name is, it was really funny, too. I forget what his actual name was, but. I took so many notes that it's actually hard to find. Uh, but, yes, those that, those are Bernard, Bernard. 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 That's what it was. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I mean, I love this film, man. I think it was great. I think it was great. Um, yeah. Are there any other moments that really, like, set in? Or if you were trying to pitch this film to any of our listeners or viewers that are out there. Which scene would I use to do it? Yes. Um, yes. The scene, oof. It's really I, hard. I, I think really so, hard. like, to, the, the pitch for me is, like, seeing him fly for the first time at, like, <laughs> like only six feet high. I in my head, I was like, I think that's what I would want to see as a trailer. Because it's just, it looks so goofy, but, like, in a really, like, like, an endearing kind of goofy. Not goofy, like, these people were incompetent. Like, no, like, goofy, like, oh, this was supposed to be a little goofy looking, and they succeeded. So, yeah, man, that is Meteor Man. Again, yes. don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you like what we do. Woo! I'm Bryce. I'm Irving. This is Parker here for the vibes. Yeah. And we will see you next week. Peace. Peace.